How you guys doing? So, uh, this is the long version of a vlog I put out, uh, well, a video I put out a couple of days ago. So, I'm just going to read this comment that was uh, placed under one of my videos that I put out maybe three years ago. Anyway, here it is. This video gets old like wine. I was using Node.js during three years as a junior developer. One day I decided to try PHP just to see how it worked. Since then, I prefer PHP for development so much stable, so much more stable and solid as a rock. I don't need to keep changing. You don't need to keep changing your backend every year or fix manu manually dirty NPM packages. That was and has been my main message. And this individual figured it out for themselves. That's been my main message about Node for years now. It's all the packages, that brittle back drop of the packages and the way it works, uh, you can see your app break unbeknownst to you for no apparent reason because somebody decides they're going to update a package somewhere. This is a nightmare. One of the most important things about software is, is that it is stable. A principle that's fundamental to object-oriented programming is that the objects that you build the components of your software be independent of influence from other objects around it. So for example, inheritance, which is actually a fundamental structure of OOP, is something you should only use very rarely because when you use inheritance, you're introducing a, um, a framework that is brittle, that is uh, open to breaking things. That's why I always say design by interface. Uh, what do I mean by open to breaking things? If you create a base object and you inherit from that object uh, basic functionality methods in that object, for example, and if you change the base object because of, you know, things happen, multiple coders, uh, then you can have a cascade of breaking code. Node.js is kind of like that with its packages where you can start leveraging all these packages everywhere and the way it's structured, things could break pretty easy. It's very brittle. Brittle code is really bad. And one of the reasons that object-oriented programming was invented was to invent brittle code. So, of course, us inventive developers reinvented different ways of becoming brittle, even with OO-based infrastructures. So anyway, so there you go. A node has its uses, but its big Achilles heel, it, the big problem that it has, as I mentioned in my short, is that it is brittle because of the way they manage the uh, packages. And so apps that uh, you've created can break because somebody changed something somewhere, one of your dependencies. Not good. Not good. That is the number one reason. And the number two reason and the number three reason I decided against using Node unless I absolutely had to. And where would you have to use Node is in uh, high concurrency applications. This is exceptionally rare. Most of us are not building the next Netflix or Facebook or something. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that. My number one choice is uh, for small app development, web apps, it's PHP, because it's small, it's lightweight, it runs fairly efficiently, it's solid as a rock, you won't have things breaking on you six months later for no given reason. Uh, they're very conservative in PHP world with regards to breaking old code. If you've heard bad things about PHP, it's because you live in 1998, or 1996 perhaps, and you still think that PHP from that time is the PHP of today, it'd be like looking at iPhone 1 and, think, and thinking that, oh, look at how bad this iPhone 1 is compared to the brand new Samsung phone. Well, yeah, you can't compare 15, 20-year-old uh, languages to what's going on today. PHP since 5.6, I would argue, is very stable. Uh, it went full OO. PHP 7 became super solid, and PHP 8 is enterprise-ready. It's got some capabilities. It's really up there. Now, that all said, as I've said in many videos, all the languages are pretty good these days. Even Node, uh, Node.js, Python Django, Java Spring Boot, if you have uh, lots and lots of time on your hand, Java Spring Boot, uh, C-sharp.net, uh, PHP Laravel, PHP Symphony, even Code Igniter, which is a PHP framework that was the predominant one, and it became, uh, anyway, it lost its uh, mojo, but apparently it's coming back. I don't know. I haven't looked at it in years, so I don't know. And Node, but again, use Node 
properly. Again, that package management thing is a huge thing that makes me not want to get near it. And I stand in good company. The guy who created Node, he skedaddled out of the Node world as well. I think he created something called Deno. I haven't looked at that as well. But anyway, most of these products, they come with their pros and cons. Well, they all do come with their pros and cons. Some, and some will be good in certain situations. Some will be good in other situations. I leave it up to you to choose. For me, I like solid, dependable, easy, simple. That's why I go with PHP. Anyway, that's it. That Node's dirty secret, the packages. Evil brittleness, not good. All right, I'm Uncle Steph. I teach people how to code. I mentor people. I have a boot camp. I call it the mentoring program because it's different from any other boot camp. It teaches you all the fundamentals you need to get your foot in the door as a professional developer. My thing about becoming a pro developer is that you got to get that you got to get into the workforce as quickly as possible. You need to get that first job. The way we do it in the mentoring program, once people cover the fundamentals, we have them go out there, do two to three projects, uh, little free freelance projects, so you can get their hands dirty with real code. It could be simple things. Put up a simple e-commerce shop, install WordPress, get that set up, uh, set up somebody's Shopify system, uh, so on and so forth. So it doesn't really matter because a big part about being a developer is being able to assess out requirements, communicate with uh, the stakeholders, uh, execute on projects on time. That's that's really the key. So if you follow that program, whether with me or otherwise, learn your fundamentals, go out, do two to three small projects. When you've done that, your value as a developer will skyrocket. So that means your chances of landing a job and it's going to increase quite a bit. Experience is everything. So you create your own experience. If you're asking, oh, I wonder if, if Uncle Steph's mentoring program, do I give you those contracts? No, I don't. Because part of being a professional is being able to go out there and find contracts. But we help you there. We support you there. We mentor you. Just like a coach doesn't play the game for the athlete, the coach directs the athlete in the right direction to save him a lot of time and not make stupid mistakes. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm Uncle Steph. Bye-bye. Thank you.